Jane, what did you think when all this film was unearthed? And then what about the prospect of telling your story yet again, to sit down with Brett? You've told it hundreds of times. I'm sure you tell it in your sleep sometimes, if needs be. So, so what made this one special? What made you say, this one I'm going to do? Well, I was kind of pressured into doing this movie. I, I didn't really. Some of the want handprints to. on your back. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I said there've been so many films. This is just boring. There'll be another one. What can they do to make it different? I, I thought the same thing too. When I, I know you did. Yeah. That's what makes us, you know, <laughs> compatible. He didn't want to do it either. He felt exactly the same. So. Anyway, yes, well, it'll give more exposure to the work. It will help the conservation of the Jane Goodall Institute, um, you know, and so I agreed to do it. I hadn't met Brett. I don't I, think you particularly liked me much when we first met either. Well, I didn't dislike you. I just true. didn't particularly want to be interviewed yet again. So anyway. Did she sniff you out? Shall she, we well, her, for my first question was... <laughs> Sort of what you said, do you get tired of telling your story? And yeah. she said, depends on who's asking the questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did say that. Anyway, so I, w I, was, <laughs> I was told there'll be maximum three hours of interviews by this guy, Brett Morgan, whom I hadn't met. Um, and we met, it was the first time we met in yeah, Tanzania. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so they created this amazing house, and um, there he was. Do you think it was three hours of interview? <laughs> it's that just one more shot thing. Huh? Well, it's a, but she had that same reaction, which is Jane, Jane's people would say to us, well, as Jane said, just use some other interviews. She's already done interviews. And as a filmmaker, like, no, we kind of want to do our own interview. And anyways, it was, I think the thing for me, and I don't know how you felt, was the stuff about your work it's very second nature to you because you lecture on that all the time. This stuff about Hugo and Grubb and your personal life is not an everyday discourse. That's, that's correct. It's not. Anyway, what I should actually say about um, the movie. First of all, clearly Brett and I clicked in some way so that I didn't mind being interviewed by him. And it was two solid days of interview, not three hours, which went on late into the night. And anyway, right? That's correct? Right, yeah. And so when I first saw the film, you know, I've seen hundreds, and this is the only one that has taken me, as I watch it, back into being that young girl in the best days of my life. So it was very moving to see it for the first time, and actually it gets more moving the more times I see it. I think also part of what made, made it fresh is that the technology that's available is available to us today in terms of um, uh, color corrections and sound enhancements uh, enabled us to take footage from 60 years ago and I think make it feel like it was as intimate and immediate as last week. In fact, you said people had asked you where you found the actress to play me. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of really intelligent people <laughs> asked that question. <laughs> that the footage is beautiful, and of course the subject wasn't so hard on the eyes themselves, right, Jane? When you sat <laughs> down and <laughs> chimps are lovely. <laughs> <laughs> when when you sat down to watch all this footage the first time, were you just overwhelmed by what you saw, or did you immediately start thinking, how am I going to structure this story? Well, you know, you got to understand that the chimps, there's a lot of repetitive activities that they engage in. So there were hours upon hours of them noshing, you know, eating food. And they don't eat with their mouths closed. So it was, that was like days upon days of watching. That was brutal. But, you know, it's it sort of, <laughs> of the 140 hours, right, Jane? I mean, you could probably break it down to eating, right? It's, I mean, I don't, it's your vocation. Yeah, would yeah. it be eating, uh, traveling from place to place, a little bit of nest making, uh, rather a good deal of Flo's mating behavior? <laughs> but not not so much. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, and then, then you go and me, yeah. and then Grub coming along. By the way, Grub is in this room. We'll we'll make him come up later, but not yet. <laughs> He's somewhere here. Um, but so it was. It, but. The arc of Jane had written one of my favorite books in the shadow of man, which is what the movie was called for a very long time. So the, her, she is an amazing writer. So she, she knows how to, again, she knows how to cast her own narrative. So 
as far as that was concerned, it seemed fairly simple. I think the one major breakthrough for us was arriving at a point where we realized that if we were telling a love story, but it was not so much a love story between a man and a woman as much as a woman and her work. Your work has expanded and your vision has expanded from Gombe and the chimps to, to what is the message you take today when you speak to kids, when you speak to general audiences? Well, I left Gombe because I realized that right across Africa, chimpanzees and forests were disappearing. And I knew I had to try and do something to help them and then realized the suffering of so many African people and need clearly we needed to help them in order to try and save the chimps. And then traveling around the world trying to raise awareness and realizing what we're doing to harm the planet. And, you know, this expression, we haven't inherited this planet from our parents, we borrowed it from our children, but we're actually stealing their future and we're still stealing their future. And so that's why I began this program of the Jane Goodall Institute, Roots and Shoots, which is now in 100 countries with young people of all ages from kindergarten to university. And the main message is each and every one of us can make a difference every single day. In fact, each day we do make a difference of some sort and we can choose what kind of difference we want to make. And, you know, when you get to be 83, I don't know how many years I have left to do this sort of thing. So people say, aren't you slowing down? I say, no, I have to hurry up because I don't know how much time there is left. And if you're given gifts, and one gift was a, a good constitution, and the other gift is communication. And I have to use them. I have to. And, you know, I look at the young people now in these hundred countries, and they actually are changing the world, even as we speak. And we hope it's fast enough.